Welcome to St. John the Evangelist, the oldest and most vibrant Catholic community in Baltimore County, Maryland. On behalf of Father Pete Literal, our pastor, and the entire parish staff, we want you to know that you are welcome, loved, and prayed for. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected all of us. At this time, please take a moment to pray for all those who have died from this deadly virus.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the celebration of Palm Sunday. Our celebrant for this liturgy is Father Pete, our pastor. As a reminder, during this phase of reopening, congregational singing and gestures of touch have been discontinued. We still encourage you to participate in this liturgy by praying the prayers, listening to the word of God, and celebrating the Eucharist. We are united with all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Please stand. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, for five weeks of Lent, we have been preparing by works of charity and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the whole church throughout the world. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion this entry which began his saving work and follow him with lively faith. So united with him in his suffering on the cross, May we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray. You bless these branches and make them holy. Today, we joyfully acclaim Jesus, our Messiah and King. May we reach one day the happiness of the new and everlasting Jerusalem by faithfully following him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please, Please hold your palm up to be blessed. <laughs>
with your spirit. A reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a cult, the third on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went up and found a cult, tethered at a gate outside of the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, to them, why are you doing untying the colt? They answered them, just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the call to Jesus and pulled their cloak over it, and he sat on it. Many people <laughs> spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come, Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, as we raise all our palms, let us uh, wave them as we enter with Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. The Jerusalem. Almighty and ever loving God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merry the share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. not shield from buffets and spitting. 
The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please listen to the word of God as we proclaim Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human Thanks, Thanks be to God.
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest Jesus by treachery and put him to death. They said, When Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why did you bring this waste of perfumed oil? This could have been sold for more than 300 wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where is the one who carries away to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city. A man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you, will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. One of the twelve, the one who dipped with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day
when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. <laughs> Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But I, after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, twice you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Seek here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. 
and they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloak behind and ran off naked. <laughs> They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you say? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. <laughs> As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. 
Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. Please kneel. Please stand. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, <coughs> why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. 
please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down wrapped him in the linen cloth and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. Jesus, Jesus enters Jerusalem and almost for 20 minutes we heard the story of his passion. As we enter the Holy Week, we prayerfully follow the long accounts of Jesus' passion and the unusual insults, mockery, violence done to him for our sakes. Jesus enters Jerusalem not as a tourist. This is now the Jerusalem of your life, my life. Jesus enters Jerusalem of our lives and we cannot be absent. This is the time when you and me cannot be absent. We cannot just be one in the crowd as spectators. We need to be with him. I will suggest that as we begin this Holy Week, for all of us to make a decision, a personal decision, to accompany Jesus, to put ourselves into this holy event of Holy Week, the final days of Jesus. Try to discover yourself in the story, in the crowd, and ask this fundamental question am I that much different from the tormentors of the Lord am I one of those who denies that he is king 
one who refuses or obeys his only teachings and commands? Or am I one who stays with him till the end? As the reading you have today describes two kinds of crowds, I really pray, encouraging you, for us or for you and me, to discover which crowd do we belong. That crowd, that enthusiastic crowd of people who cheer Jesus when he enters Jerusalem, riding on the back of the donkey. And there is that mob that jeers at him on the cross. To which one would you have belong? Or are you coming with him to the Jerusalem of your life? This is our Holy Week. And we are all invited to join Jesus in prayer. To accompany Jesus till the end. That we may be able also to demonstrate or to show to Jesus our willingness to bear the pain, the suffering that he bore. We join our faith community in this journey. Those people following our live streaming join your church in prayer and be with Jesus. Never allow yourself to be absent anymore. For this Jesus came for you and me, for all of us. Join our faith community to take in the cross, the call of God that he gave, the mission he partnered with us, and the confession that we must always proclaim. There is one, the Son of God, who emptied himself of his divinity, embraced the cross, died for our sake. We must proclaim what Jesus did. As he enters Jerusalem, he enters our lives. Never allow Jesus to enter your heart unnoticed, alone. Now is the time for us to proclaim and be grateful for what Jesus did. Now is the time for us to proclaim that we are with him and we recognize what he did for us. So let us make this week the holiest days of our lives by being with him till the end. Amen. Please rise. All together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, let us offer our inter intercession to God as we respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, under our Holy Father and the bishops, who teach in the name of Christ, may it sustain the weary and the suffering with a word of courage, righteousness, and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing for the sacraments of initiation this Easter, may they find support from this community to confess with us that Jesus is Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are discerning the call to the priesthood, the acting, or consecrated life, may they empty themselves as Christ did and serve him. Lord, hear our prayer. For the successful celebration of our bicentennial, may God anoint all the events and people who labor in preparation and bless all our people with a new sense of community and mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Ralph Galassio, brother of Marilyn Donahue, and members of our parish. Lord, hear our prayer. For Richard Orton Sr., for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, a source of salvation and life, with perfect love, your Son gave himself to the agony of the cross for our salvation. Hear the prayers we present. Give us what we need to serve you faithfully. In your love, guide us through this Holy Week, where we celebrate our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As we reflect on the liturgy of the word in Father Pete's homily, we offer to you, sing Hosanna.
give you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by your Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, was away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we Sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. coming together as one God's family and formed by the divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <coughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And peace of Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Before we distribute the communion, we are going to pray the act of spiritual communion, especially for our brothers and sisters joining us by a live streaming. My Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you are, you are present, present in the most holy sacrament. sacrament. I, I love, love you above all things. things. And, and I desire to receive you into my soul. soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Processing through the cobbled streets. Processing through the cobbled streets. And pressing on its way. Exalted multitudes running. With shouts on high. With shouts on high. Let us pray, nourished with his sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before I do the final blessing, I'd like really to thank all of you for joining us in opening our Holy Week in the celebration of Palm or Passion Sunday. And we thank all our volunteers and the ministers who assisted us, also especially the music ministry who assisted us in this celebration, all the lectors, Eucharistic ministers, all our servers, all we thank you for making our celebration truly a vibrant celebration in a very safe environment. And I would like to encourage everybody to take with you a copy of our Sunday Bulletin or look on our website for information with regards to the Holy Week. The liturgical schedule for Holy Week is included in the Bulletin. Consider observing this Easter by participating in confession and the full schedule of the three dooms, including Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. As uh, Easter approaches and the land draws to an end, know always that your gift to the Easter offering enable us always to enjoy wonderful liturgies, programs, and ministries during the holiest of season throughout the year. Easter offering envelopes were sent for your gift to the Easter offering, and we are grateful for all our parishioners who continuously support the mission of St. John, especially as we come closer and closer to our opening of the bicentennial celebration that will take place on April 18. Operation Rouse Bowl contribution can be placed in a white CRS rice bowl box in the Nartex. And just this coming weekend, we will no longer require 
signing in or free registration for daily or weekend masses, we have found a most effective way of communicating to you when we have a case of COVID in the church. However, we will continue signing in during funeral masses because we do not know who are coming in here during the celebration of funeral masses. So everybody is truly encouraged to come back to church. We'll try our best to accommodate everybody. If there is an overflow, we will have the social hall be open by a live big screen, live streaming. And we thank all of you for being patient with us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain standing in place until the presider's presence has exited the sanctuary. Please follow the usher's guidance for dismissal and have a beautiful week. Thank you.